Well, how did I get from this to this? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Before we get too far into today's video, I just want to be very clear that I'm not trying to sell you on the idea of doing film photography. In fact, I, I think for most people, it's not really a great idea. I have my own personal reasons for dedicating this year to doing film photography, but those are my own personal reasons. I really don't care what you use for your photography. As long as you're happy with what you're doing and you're getting the results you want, well, that's all that really matters. As you can see, we had a lot of storm damage. <laughs> uh, or a few weeks ago we had a really massive storm that brought down a lot of trees and branches. It was it was pretty uh, pretty intense for a while. I haven't done a video for a few weeks, nor have I actually taken out my camera and made images for a few weeks. I'm in the process of redoing my lens lineup a little bit, getting rid of some lenses that aren't working well with the photography I want to do right now. And I'm on, also in the process of maybe upgrading this video camera to something a little higher resolution. Still small and basic, but it's time to uh, it's time to upgrade a little bit. And then I'm also redoing my website. So if you notice my website's down, it'll probably be down for another couple weeks, I would imagine. I'm, I'm working on it. And with that all said, let's get into the story of how I got from digital to film. About a year ago, I was contacted by a viewer of the channel, Louise, and she offered me her Sony a7R II to use for my photography. Asked if I'd be interested. Now, I've been a Nikon user pretty much my whole professional career. I'd used Canon early on when I was learning. When I went into journalism, I just, my gear was provided. It was Nikon, so I just went with that. So I really had no idea what this camera was. I, <laughs> I never kept up on what, what Sony was producing. So I had to actually look it up and I checked out the specs. And once I realized that it was a basically a, a fairly high resolution camera, at least for its time, I thought, well, that might be kind of fun. Well, sure, why not? I'll try it out. It, was, it looked compact. Look small, maybe I'll use it on a bike ride or something. A few weeks later, I was blessed to have a Sony a7R II show up on my doorstep. <laughs> a very generous uh, offering, I thought. But what I didn't expect was how well I would take to the camera. I fell in love with the, uh, the layout of the camera, the look of the files. I felt they made great black and white images. The raw files were amazing. It, even with the kit lens it came with, it worked really well. So that put me in a bit of a dilemma. And I had mentioned this in a video before. I wasn't sure if I should just sell all my Nikon gear, buy a bunch of Sony stuff. I really didn't want to go to that extreme, but I really wanted to use this camera. And some of the uh, viewers of this channel suggested that I should just get an adapter and use my Nikon lenses. Oh, well, the adapter's cheap. Well, at least give it a try, see what happens. So that's what I did. I, uh, I tried it out with a few of my lenses, and wow, it worked pretty good. 
and of course I had the manual focus. It was it was just a dumb adapter, nothing fancy. So then I started thinking, huh? Well, I wonder how some of these old manual focus Nikon lenses would work on the Sony, like this Nikon 105 2.5 lens. Today we've got the Nikkor 135 millimeter AI lens. To my surprise, these lenses were, I was picking up really affordable, were really working well. I really liked the look and I was actually enjoying them. Got to a point where that's all I was using. I was just taking the Sony out with some adapted prime lenses and really enjoying making images with that setup. So I used this setup a lot over the year. Finished the Zine project. Really enjoyed working with it. I really liked the simplicity of the manual focus lenses. So much so that I started thinking, wow, this is a lot like shooting film. It felt very similar to the film photography experience. So much so that I had all these old lenses now. <laughs> I thought, hmm, boy, maybe I should give film photography another try. I thought I was done with film photography. When I uh, stopped using it the prior year, I thought that was it. I thought I'd done all I wanted to do with film photography. But all, those feelings of wanting to use film photography again came back. I'd been trying to fight the idea coming up with reasons not to use film. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons not to use film. But then I kept seeing these, all these reasons to use film. And so I had a roll of film on a camera that had just started to be shot a year before and I just set it aside. So I thought, well, I'll, f I'll finish up that roll and uh, just to see what I get. Maybe, maybe that will bring me back to reality. When I got that roll back after finished using it up, oh, I really liked the images. <laughs> but my scans were still just not great. I, I was having trouble getting what I wanted out of the scans. And I think that was one reason that I stopped using film in the first place. So I started using the Sony for my scans. I also went out and bought a better macro lens to attach to the Sony. And bam, my, my scans were really good actually super good so then I didn't have an excuse not to shoot film anymore and that led me to to the point where okay well let's, if you're gonna shoot film let's let's just shoot film let's not go back and forth let's uh, let's commit to it let's see if I can get better at using film let's see if I can get better at making my images on film I really like having a negative I really like the idea that possibly someday having a darkroom again. But until then, I have a really excellent method of scanning my uh, my negatives. So I, I sold off my Nikon digital cameras. <laughs> and right now I'm in the process of getting rid of a couple more of my Nikon lenses that don't have an aperture ring. They work with the camera I'm using but I have to constantly change be between settings when I use those lenses. And I want all my lenses to be set up the same. It's a little bit of annoyance. It's, it's a little thing. So now I'm left with one digital camera, and that's my Sony, and film cameras. I have a couple of film cameras. And that act of generosity set this whole thing in motion. <laughs> that one moment that I was given a camera that I didn't think I needed or wanted or really cared to I wasn't looking for it that set everything in motion to get me to the point I am now I have no idea where I'll be or what I'll be doing next year in photography I don't want to think that far ahead but I have to say I'm I'm really enjoying uh, my photography right now well that's enough navel gazing for me today <laughs> Making videos 
of film photography for me takes quite a bit longer than when I'm out using a digital camera. It takes me a little, quite a while to actually get through a roll of 36 exposure film. So I guess that contributes to the, keeping the cost down. So what I'm trying to do is keep my topics, my stuff that just uh, I want to talk about, keep that separate. I may have one of these videos every once in a while. I want to keep my videos when I'm out in the field making pictures about that experience. I find the more I have to talk and think about things to say, it really does intrude on the experience of being out and connecting with nature. So the less I, I talk when I'm out making pictures, I think the more I enjoy the experience. So if I'm going to cover any topics in photography, you know, I, I don't know how much of that I will do. There's plenty of that out there. Don't worry, I'm not going to be doing any pro tips or what the, uh, what the pros know that you don't or, or the secrets of photography videos. So I think that's a bunch of baloney. Here, here's the, here's the secret. There are no secrets. <laughs> Photography is, hasn't changed that much. There's no magic pill. It's just getting out and practicing and finding your voice with your camera by getting out and taking pictures. So we're gonna end today's video right here. As we climb around all this debris. Until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.